Have you ever been impeded by bad code? If you are a programmer of any experience, then you definitely have experienced this impediment many times. We all felt that relief uh, when our messy code just runs and we said like, okay, we, I'm gonna come back and clean it later. But we all know that later means never. Hello guys, if you're new here, my name is Vadim and welcome to my channel. I've been coding for over 7 years now and recently I have finished my internship at Amazon, which significantly raised my bar for code quality. For that reason, I decided to start a, a mini-series where I will share with you some tips and tricks on how to write better code and cleaner code. This series will be based on the book Clean Code, link in the description by the way, and I will also add my own experience of things that worked and things that didn't. So please consider subscribing to my channel if you are interested in this type of content and if you want to become a better programmer and write cleaner code. Today we're gonna speak about meaningful names in programming, so watch this video till the end and you'll understand how to better write good names for your functions, classes, variables and you'll also be able to uh, refactor a bad name into a good one. Names are everywhere in software. We name our variables, our functions, our classes, our arguments, packages and much more. And because we do uh, so much of it, we'd better do it well. And in this specific case, please don't be like Elon Musk and don't name your variables the same way as Elon Musk names his kids. Poor X Ash A12, I can't even pronounce it. Rule number one, use intention revealing names. The name of a function, a variable or a class should answer all the big question. It should tell you why it exists, what it does and how it is used. If a name uh, is uh, accompanied by a comment, then the name does not reveal its intent. For example, in this case, the name D does not reveal anything. It does not evoke a sense of elapsed time nor of days. We should choose our names uh, to specify what is being measured and also the unit of measurement. For example, these are already better names because uh, just by reading them it's clear why we use them. Rule number two, use pronounceable names. Humans are good at words, so make your names pronounceable, because if they're not pronounceable, you cannot have an intelligent conversation without sounding like an idiot. For example, a company that I know uses this name, uh, which stands for generation, date, year, month, day, hour, second, uh, and minutes and seconds, and they were walking around the office uh, sounding like, like idiots, like uh, uh, Gen Y M H D S. Okay, I'm lost, but you get the point. A better alternative in this case would be a generation timestamp. An already intelligent conversation can uh, be possible. Uh, for example, hey Mike, uh, look at this record. The generation timestamp is tomorrow. How can that be possible? Rule number three use searchable names. Single letter names and numeric constants uh, have a particular problem in that they are uh, very hard to search uh, in a body of text. Uh, it's very easy to search, for example, a variable called max classes per student uh, rather than searching the digit 7 in your project. My personal preference is that single letter names should only be used as local variables inside short methods. Also, the length of a name should correspond to its uh, size of a scope. Rule number four, avoid mental mapping. Readers shouldn't have to mentally translate your names into the names that they already know. This is specifically a problem with single letter names. And of course, in uh, loops, you can use a single letter variable names i, j and k, uh, because that's uh, traditional and everyone knows about that. Uh, but in every other case, a single letter name is usually a poor choice and it's a, just a placeholder uh, that the programmer has to mentally map to the actual concept of it. Rule number five, class names. Uh, classes and objects should have a noun or a noun phrase uh, in their name. For example, customer, uh, wiki page, uh, address parser and so on. Also, avoid using manager, processor, data, info, and these vague uh, words in class names. And the last thing is that you should never use a verb inside a class name. 
Rule number six, method names. On the other hand, methods should have a verb or a verb phrase uh, in their name. For example, like post payment, save, delete account, and so on. Accessor, mutators, and predicates should be named for their value and prefixed with set, get, and is. For example, uh, set gender, get gender, or is male, is female, and so on. Rule number seven, pick one word per concept. Pick one word for an abstract concept and stick with it and be consistent. Uh, for example, it's very confusing to have in one program uh, get, fetch, retrieve and similar names in different classes uh, because once you start programming, you have to dig deep into the code and do a lot of searches and code examples to understand which class is using which name, which is a necessary effort. Have a consistent lexicon and stick with it and the next programmers that will be working on your code will thank you later. So guys, don't be afraid to uh, rename things because most of the times uh, nobody remembers the names of classes and um, uh, methods uh, because we use modern tools to deal with those details and we should focus on making our code uh, be readable like a sentence or a paragraph. You will probably end up surprising someone if you refactor and rename a thing uh, the same way as you will surprise them when improving the code. Follow some of these rules and let me know if your code quality improved. Uh, if you're maintaining an old code, use refactoring tools in your IDE to help you with these problems and it will definitely pay off in short term and long term. That's it for today guys. Thanks a lot for watching and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and I'll try to make more videos on this topic in future. Also, write down below what other tips and tricks you have to write better code. And as always guys, take care, stay hydrated and write clean code. Bye bye.